Danger Street is a 12-issue miniseries written by Tom King and illustrated by Jorge Fornes. It features every character that debuted during the cancelled DC series first issue special. Now these are my first impressions and they're subject to change. After all, the series recently ended. So for those wondering if Danger Street is something to read but don't want spoilers, here's what I would say without ruining anything major. I would rank Danger Street as a lower, mid-level King miniseries. It's not as involved and thematically interesting as Vision or Mr. Miracle, but it's not a train wreck like Heroes in Crisis. It comfortably fits below the human target and Supergirl. It's a straightforward story that's not trying to be anything more than that. Although it has some glaring weaknesses, such as the insertion of the new gods into a grand subplot that just doesn't work. When it comes to these King miniseries, I personally find it helpful to think of them as out-of-continuity side stories. Certainly, the continuity of each character is represented, up to a point, and that point is ambiguous at best. For the purposes of the story, continuity stops, moves to the side, and then proceeds onward into its own separate reality. If you're unable to make that separation, Danger Street is not for you. Here's why. While many in Danger Street are one-off characters that have no continuity whatsoever, some do. Like Warlord, Starman, Creeper, Metamorpho, Manhunter, and Dr. Fate. With Warlord and Manhunter, there are some noticeable continuity conflicts, and their characterization, along with Starman and the Creeper, is tailored to fit the story. So one needs to separate what they may know in order to enjoy the story, which may be a big ask if you're a continuity junkie because I can guarantee you'll pause and go, when and how did Travis Morgan leave Scartaris? Or when did Metamorpho forget he was part of the Justice League? As a side note, if anyone at DC is watching, it would be great if you made the complete Warlord series available as digital editions. It's an oversight that this classic series hasn't been preserved and made easily discoverable. I'm not sure if there's a problem with rights and Mike Grell isn't happy with what you offer or if there's some other issue. Whatever it is, work it out, so another generation can discover the series. Thank you. Back to the video. In somewhat typical King fashion, there are repeating elements baked in. The title of each issue repeats the title of the correlating issue from First Issue Special. However, there doesn't seem to be an obvious thematic connection between the original issue and what occurs in Danger Street. As far as I can tell, this is simply a callback to the original series. The first and last panel of every issue is a static shot of the Helmet of Fate. The only exceptions are the first issue and the ninth issue. For the first issue, the entire first page is dedicated to Fate being introduced. It's a necessary scene to establish Fate's involvement. The identity of the young man carrying Fate won't be revealed until much later. The only issue without Fate's narration is issue number nine, although the chapter title is Dr. Fate. So, fate as a theme is represented through abstract implication. And the final page is usually a montage, showing where each character is within the story. These elements are King's writing quirks. Every writer has them. For whatever reason, King likes to bookend each issue with something that is reliable and indicates the opening and closing of a chapter. The atmosphere of the story itself is that of a modern fairy tale. Everyone in the story is assigned a role except the ordinary people, as represented by the dingbats. There is an ogre, monsters, knights, dragons, princes, and a princess. To continue the fairy tale theme, a wish sets the sequence of events into motion, and another wish brings about a happy ending. It's also timeless, in the sense that the time period it occurs feels modern, but it's never actually defined. The story itself is narrated by the helmet of Dr. Fate, which gives the impression that the following story was destined to happen. Or more likely, the fates of these characters are all related because they share a connection through the series, First Issue Special. Of course, with any narrator, one has to question their reliability. One has to ask, are they objectively relating the events, or is there a certain bias being revealed? Considering this is fate, well, the personification of fate without a human host bound to it, one can presume fate's perspective is objective. They aren't skewing the narrative in a specific direction because they don't have a human influence or bias. In other words, this is pure fate. Although, fate assigning roles to the various characters does show a bias, or at the very least, fate has made a value judgment concerning their character and has decided their role. So, while one could argue fate is objective and reliable, it definitely has the hint of an underlying bias. 
fairy tales usually have some moral attached to them. Quite honestly, if it's anything, it's about ordinary people having the power to save the world. Times may feel bleak, with all the social unrest, and loud, primarily obnoxious discourse, which gives one the impression the sky is metaphorically falling, but ordinary people can make a difference in these challenging times. Or something along that lines. It's not exactly deep, or especially meaningful. Now, if you dislike Tom King's writing, or how he uses obscure characters, then this is simply more fuel on that specific fire. You'll find a lot to dislike. If you're a fan of King, you'll recognize this isn't his best effort. If you're ambivalent, you'll probably think the story is a bit messy, tries a bit too hard, and is just okay. There may be elements to dig into a bit further, but there's no motivation to reread it. Would I personally recommend it? That's a firm no. While I didn't hate it, and I do appreciate the intended scope and the variety of characters being used, it needed another draft or two before it was ready for publication. It's definitely not incompetent or incoherent, but as an example of a glaring weakness that needed more thought, the Sky is Falling subplot really, really doesn't work. Like, at all. It feels tacked on to include the new gods and to deliver the moral of the story. Furthermore, the tension or urgency these scenes try to add falls flat. Another example of weakness is the ninth issue, where Manhunter and Codename Assassin face off. It gets tedious about halfway through. Two zealots having a philosophical debate over the destined outcome of their fight gets very boring at a certain point. Ultimately, it's a drawn-out battle which arrives at a conclusion that shouldn't surprise anyone. It's supposed to be ironic, but it reads like a writer trying to justify the outcome with two characters arguing about fate. But by the end, you just want the fight to be over so you can move on with your life. The artwork by Jorge Fornes is stellar. There is a brevity to his style that is sublime and the staging of a scene is intuitive and organic. A reader never gets lost in the flow or gets confused with how something plays out. It's expressive without being overwrought and detailed without being over-rendered. It's some skillful visual storytelling. Hello and welcome to the end of the video. Since this is very likely my final video for 2023, I thought I would take a moment and say Happy New Year to everyone. I hope the next year is amazing for you all and I hope I will see all of you return in 2024. Until later, bye, have a good new year. All that's left to say is thank you for watching, or listening, whatever the case may be. Additional thanks to all my fine supporters on YouTube and Patreon. I'm still struggling to hit my goal of being able to do this full time, and possibly to do longer or more videos per week. So if you can help, please do. Extra special thanks to Phil Sagan, Edward Clayton Andrews, Corey Drew, Alexa Zernish, Brian Deaton, Johnny Lim, Steve White, Taylor Dull, and Matt Marino. You are all justified and ancient. Hey look, a playlist. Check it out for a variety of fine video products. Until next time.